America is thirsty for authentic information about how to push back against this race grievance industry. As, as, as Josh pointed out, the new patriots will be black Americans. It's black America has to stand up and say to the left, you do not represent us. The only way we can undermine the moral authority of the left is to permit those in whose name they are saying they're taking these actions to speak for themselves. Robert Leon Woodson Sr., or better yet, Bob Woodson, born April 8, 1937, is an American civil rights activist, community development leader, author and founder, and president of Woodson Center. The Woodson Center is a nonprofit research and demonstration organization that supports neighborhood-based initiatives to revitalize low-income communities. In February 2020, Woodson launched the Center's 1776 Unites campaign to counter the 1619 Project. Woodson was born in Philadelphia. His father died soon after. Woodson and his siblings were raised by his mother. In 1954, he dropped out of high school to join the Air Force. While in the Air Force, he passed the GED tests. After leaving the Air Force, he went to graduate from Cheney University in 1962 with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, then from the University of Pennsylvania in 1965 for Masters in Social Work. Woodson has been actively involved in the civil rights and community development since 1962 to 1968. Unitarian Services, committee social worker from Boston in 1968 to 1971. Also, the National Urban League Administration of Justice Division, director of New York City 1971 to 1973, and American Enterprise Institute, 1974 to 1981. That's a lot of work done. Let's see him in action. That is a road clip, fair use. So we believe that the way that America can move forward is that we have to change the messenger, that conservatives have to support blacks in, the in, in, in confronting this, uh, th this lie that they're telling about how we are suffering as a consequence of slavery. Not an academic um, or professional intellectual, I'm an empiricist. I found out what that meant from Dr. Peter Berger when I was a liberal civil rights uh, activist and I met uh, Peter Berger who invited me in to uh, sit with uh, Vanden Hogg, James Q. Wilson, um, Bob Nesbitt early in the 70s to discuss conservative theories versus my uh, 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 empirical experience. And I remember James Q. Wilson talking about if uh, economic analysis of how people change. If you change the incentives, uh, increase the incentives and the sanctions and people will change. And he was applying this to reducing violence. And, and I listened and I said, well, my experience is uh, threatening a gang member with de a death is like uh, challenging a kamikaze pilot. Death is what they do. You have to first get people to invest in who they are and what they are before you then can threaten to withdraw it. That's a fundamental premise that, that uh, and so I got invited to come to the American Enterprise Institute and what attracted me to conservatism from liberalism is this willingness, to, as Dr. King said, the highest form of maturity is the ability to be self-critical. We need to be self-critical now more than any other time, as Josh has said, the clock is running. Another example from history that we're presenting is a, is a man named Robert Smalls, who was born in 1839 in uh, Sumter, North Carolina. He was a slave working on a ship. And one night when uh, his masters went, went to, to leave, he commandeered the ship, and along with his five other crewmen, they uh, sneaked out of the, uh, the port, picked up their families, and put their master's hat on, and waved and went past five different garrison and turned the supply ship over to the Union Navy. Well, Robert Smalls was celebrated throughout the country, and as a consequence of his heroic actions, Lincoln admitted blacks in to fight for the Union Army. Well, after the war, Robert Smalls became a successful businessman and got elected to the Congress during Reconstruction. And he went back and purchased the plantation on which he was a slave. 
And because the family of the slave master had become destitute, in an act of radical grace, he took in the wife and children of the slave master and even allowed her to remain in the master bedroom as she had become delusional and didn't realize that the war was over. And I think that's a marvelous story of the resilience of black Americans to thrive and achieve against the odds, to be born a slave, and through the free, free enterprise system, earn enough money to come back and actually purchase the plantation in which he was a slave and exhibited the kind of radical grace that enabled him to take in and care for the family of the slave master. And so we are taking these experiences that are ignored and overlooked by 1619 and presenting these as evidence that America should not ever be defined by its birth defect of slavery, but it should be defined by the promise that he'd held. Wow, full salute and respect, sir. Hey guys, it's Jose, your regular Joe Blow again, keeping an eye out and my ears open to respectable elders we can thrive to emulate. That's all I got to say. Tells me I have a long way to go. I just got started on my mission guys when i see an independent work this hard only gives me more energy and the tenacity to continue to bring you more conservatives libertarians republicans and an independent that love this country and its people as always and it's these people that make me thrive as always do your own research and i'll do my part to bring you more information let's continue together guys truly thank you for the support and always stay free. It ain't hard to tell. I excel. 